Live from San Jose, it's theCUBE. Presenting Big Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Jose for Big Data SV, Big Data Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE. We're here with two great guests, Jaspreet Singh, founder and CEO of Druva, and Jake Burns, VP of Cloud Services of Live Nation Entertainment. Welcome to theCUBE. So what's going on with cloud? Apps are out there, backup, recovery, what's going on? So you know, we're, we went all in with uh, AWS um, in uh, late 2015 and through 2016 we moved uh, all of our corporate infrastructure into AWS. And um, you know, I think we're a little bit unique in that situation. So in terms of our posture, we're 100% cloud. Jesse, what's going on with you guys in the cloud? Because we've talked about this before with, with a lot of the apps in the cloud. Backup is really important. What's the key thing that you guys are doing together uh, with Live Nation? Sure, so I think the, the notion of data is now pretty much everywhere, right? The data is uh, captured, controlled in data center, now it's getting decentralized into getting into apps and ecosystems and, and software and services deployed either at the edge or in the cloud. Um, as the data gets more and more decentralized, the, the notion of data management, uh, be it backup, be it e-discovery, anything has to get more and more centralized. And, and we strongly believe the, the epicenter of this whole data management has to move to cloud. So Druva is a SaaS-based provider for our data management. Uh, and we work with Live Nation to, uh, to predict the apps uh, not just in the data center, uh, but also at the edge, and also their cloud data center, uh, their, their, their applications uh, deployed in the cloud, uh, be it Live Nation or Ticketmaster. So. And what are some of the workloads you guys are backing up uh, that's with, with Druva? Yeah, so it's pretty much all corporate IT uh, applications, you know, typical things you'd find in any IT shop, really. Um, so, you know, we have our financial systems and we have um, some of our smaller ticketing systems and, um, you know, uh, we have corporate websites, things of, things of that nature. So it's like, we have 120 applications that are running and it's just really kind of one of everything. We were talking before we came on camera about the history of computing and the cloud has obviously changed the game. Well, how would you compare the cloud as a trend relative to operationalizing the role of data and obviously GDPR, ransomware? These are things that are now, with the perimeter gone, there's worries. And so how do you guys look at the cloud? So Jake, I'll start with you. If you can compare and contrast where we've come from and where we're going, role of the cloud, significant, primary, expanding, how would you uh, compare that and how would you talk to someone who says, hey, I'm still in the data center world, what's going on with cloud? Well, yeah, it's, it's significant and it's expanding both. Um, and, you know, it's really uh, transforma transforming the way we do business. So, um, you know, just from a high level, things like um, shortening the time to market for, for applications, um, going from three to six months just to get uh, a proof of concept started to today, mm -hmm. you know, in the cloud. Um, being able to um, innovate really by uh, trying things, trying, you, we try 20 different things, decide what works, what doesn't work, and at very low cost, right? So it allows us to, to really um, do things that just weren't possible before. Um, so uh, also, you know, we, we, we move more quickly because, you know, we're not afraid of making mistakes. If we provision uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. and we don't get it right the first time, we just change it. You know, that's something that we would just never be able to do previously in the data center. So, and the service, question, everything's different. And as a service model has been kind of key. Is the consumption on your end different? Like, I mean, radically different? Like, give an example, like how much time would it save or take to use other, the traditional approaches? Oh, for sure, you know, and the role of IT has completely changed because, you know, instead of worrying about uh, nuts and bolts and servers and, and storage arrays and the data centers, you know, we could really focus on the things that are important to the business. You know, and those things, um, you know, delivering results for the business. So, bringing value, bringing applications online, and 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 trying things that are going to help, uh, you know, us do business rather than focusing on all of the minutia. Um, all of that stuff's now been outsourced to a cloud provider. So, really, you know, we have a similar headcount and in, in staff, but we're focused on things that bring value rather than things that are just kind of frivolous. Chesper, you guys have been a very successful startup, growing rapidly. Um, the cloud been a good friend, the trend is your friend with the cloud. Mm -hmm. What's different operationally that you guys are tapping into? What's, the, what's that tailwind for Druva that's making you guys successful uh, in this? Is it, is it the ease of use, is it the ease of consumption, is it the tech? What's the, what's the secret to success with Druva? 
Sure, so we believe cloud is a very big business transformation trend, more than a technology trend, right? It's how you uh, consume a service with a fixed SLA, with a fixed uh, service agreement across the, across the globe, right? So uh, it's ease of consumption, it's simplicity of use, it's orchestration, it's cost control, all those things. Um, so our promise to our customers is the complexity of data management, backups, archives, data protection, which is a, a risk mitigation project, uh, you know, can be completely abstracted by a simple service. For example, you know, uh, Live Nation consumers consume the Driva service through Amazon Marketplace. So think about consuming a critical service like data management through a simplicity of marketplace, pay as you go, mm -hmm. as you consume the uh, service, um, across the globe, in, in the US, in Australia, uh, in Europe. Um, it also helps the vendors like us to innovate better, because we have a, a control environment to understand how different customers are using the service and be able to uh, orchestrate better security posture, mm -hmm. uh, better uh, threat prevention, better cost control, uh, DevOps, mm -hmm. so uh, it improves the, the posture of the uh, service being offered yeah. and, and helps the customer consume it. You guys are both industry uh, veterans by today's standards, unless you're like 24 doing some of the cryptocurrency stuff that you know doesn't know the old IT baggage. How would you guys view the, the multi-cloud conversation? Because we hear that all the time. Multi-cloud has come up so many times. What does it mean? Jake, what does multi-cloud actually mean? Is it the same workload across multiple clouds? It's about to have multiple clouds? Certainly, there will be multiple clouds. But so, help us digest what that even means these days. Yeah, it's a great question, and it's a really interesting topic. Um, multi-cloud is one of those things where, you know, there's so many benefits to using more than one cloud provider, but there are also a lot of pitfalls. So people really underestimate the, the difference in the technology and, and the complexity of managing the technology when you change cloud providers. I'm talking primarily about infrastructure, infrastructure as a service providers like uh, Amazon Web Services. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, good reasons to be multi-cloud, um, to get the best features out of a uh, different provider, um, to not have, uh, you know, the risk of having all your data in one, one place with one vendor. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know it needs to be done in such a way where you don't take that hit uh, in overhead and complexity, and um, you know I think that's kind of a, a prohibitive barrier for, for most enterprises. And to, what are the to big trust. pitfalls that you see? Is it mainly underestimating the stack complexities between them, or is it more of just operational questions? I mean, what is the some of the pitfalls that you you observe? Yeah, so moving from uh, like a typical IT data center environment to a public cloud provider like AWS, you're essentially asking all of your technical staff to start speaking a new language. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to introduce a second cloud provider to that uh, environment, now you're asking them to learn a third language as well, and that's a lot to ask. So, you have really two scenarios where you can make that work today uh, without using a third party, and that's ask all of your staff to know both, and that's just not feasible, or uh, have two teams, one for each cloud platform, that's really not something businesses want to do. So I think the real answer is to rely on a third party that can come in and kind of abstract one of those cloud uh, complexities of one of those cloud providers out, uh, for, so you don't have to directly manage it. And in that way, you can get the benefit of being multi-cloud, that data protection of yeah. being multi-cloud, but not have to introduce that complexity to an abstraction layer or some sort of software approach. Yeah, like for example, if you have your primary systems in AWS and you use a software like Druva Phoenix to back up your, your data and you put that um, data into a second cloud provider, you don't have to have an account with that second cloud provider, you don't have to have the risk of, you know, um, uh, associated with that or complexity associated with that. that. I think that's a very... And that's where you're looking for differentiation. When you look at the venue and say, hey, don't make me work harder right. and add new staff. Solve the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's all about solving problems, right? And that's why we're doing this. Yeah. So, Drew, talk about this thing, because we talked about earlier about, oh, to me, we hear people, oh, we're on Azure. Well, they have Office 365. Of course, they're going to have Microsoft. And a lot of people have a lot going on in AWS. So, maybe we're not there at the world where you can actually just provision across clouds the same workload. It would be nice to have that mm -hmm. someday if it was seamless. <laughs> but I think that might be the, the, the nirvana. But at the end of the day, um, an enterprise might have a lot of Office 365, hence some Azure. But I got some, mostly Amazon over here, I'm doing a lot of development on, doing a DevOps, and I'm on on-prem. How do you talk to that? Because that's like, you got to back up Office 365, you got to do the on-prem thing, you got to do the Amazon thing. How do you guys solve that problem, and what's the conversation? Absolutely, I think uh, over time, we believe best of breed will win, so people will deploy different type of cloud for different workloads, be it SaaS, hosted IaaS, or, or a platform like PaaS. 
uh, when they do that, when they host, uh, you know, when they host uh, multiple uh, uh, services, softwares to, to deploy services, uh, I think it's hard to control where the data will go. Uh, what we can orchestrate or anybody can orchestrate is the centralizing the data management part of it. So Druva has the best posture, has the, has the best coverage across uh, multiple heterogeneous clouds, be it uh, you know, uh, services like Office 365, Box or Salesforce, or be it platforms like uh, S3 or, or, or DynamoDB through our product called Apollo, or hosted platforms like what Live Nation is using through our Phoenix product line. So getting a, a breadth of coverage, consistency of policies on a single platform is what will make enterprises adopt what's best out there without worrying about how do you uh, build abstraction for data management. Jake, what's the biggest thing that you see people who are moving to the cloud for the first time, what are they struggling with? Is it the idea that there's no perimeter? Is it staff, training? I mean, what are some of the, the as people move from test dev and or start putting production in the cloud, what are some of the critical things they should think about? Yeah, there's so many of them, but first, really, it's just getting buy-in um, you know, from your technical staff because uh, you know, in an enterprise environment, you bring in a cloud provider, it, it's very easily frame the whole as you know, we're just being outsourced, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, getting past that barrier first and really getting through to folks and letting them know that really this is good for you, this is not bad for you. You're yeah. going to be learning a new skill, very valuable skill, and you're going to be more effective at your job. Um, so I think that's the first thing. Um, after that, once you start moving to the cloud, then the thing that becomes apparent very quickly is cost control. So, you know, the thing with public cloud is, you know, before you had this really kind of narrow range of what IT could cost uh, with a traditional data center, now we have this huge range. And yes, it can be cheaper than it was before, but it could also be far more expensive than it was before. So services for all, or so you're just not paying attention, both, or? Well, you essentially, you're giving your engineers a blank check. <laughs> so <laughs> so you need to have some governance, yeah. and, um, you know, you really need to uh, think about things that you didn't have to yeah. think about before. You're paying for consumption, yeah. so you have to really watch your consumption. So take me through the mental model of deduplication in the cloud, because I'm trying to like <laughs> visualize it or grok it a little bit. Okay, so the cloud's out there, it's data's everywhere. And do I move the compute to the data? How does the backup and recovery and data management work? And what's, does dedupe change with cloud? Because some people think, well, I, I got my dedupe already, I'm on premise, I've been using these old solutions. How does dedupe specifically change in the cloud, or does it? I think scale changes. You're, you're looking, you know, the best dedupe systems, if you look historically, uh, you know, uh, were 100 terabyte, 200 terabyte dedupe indexes, data domain. Uh, the scale changes, you know, customers expect massive scale in cloud. A largest customer has 10 petabyte in a single dedupe index. It's a 100x scale difference compared to what traditional systems could do. Uh, number two, you could create a quality of service which is not really bound by a fixed you know, algorithm like you know, variable length or whatever, right? So you can optimize a dedu uh, very clearly for the right workload, the right dedu for the right workload. So you may dedu Office 365 differently than your, your VMware uh, instances compared to your uh, Oracle databases or your, your endpoint workloads. Uh, so it, it, it helps you, the as a service business model, helps you create a custom tailored solution for the right data and bring the scale. We don't have the complexity of scale, but you get the benefit of scale, uh, all mm -hmm. you know, simply managed in the cloud. Jake, what's it like working with Druva? What's the benefit that they bring to you guys? Yeah, so specifically around backups for our, for our enterprise systems, you know, um, that's a that's a difficult challenge to solve natively in the cloud, yeah. especially if you're going to be limited to using cloud native mm -hmm. tools. So it's really, um, it's a really perfect use case for a third party provider. You know, <laughs> people don't think about this much, but in the old days in the data center, you know, our, our backups went off site into a vault, they were on tapes. It was yeah. very difficult for us to lose those or for them to be erased accidentally or even intentionally. Once you go uh, into the cloud, especially if you're all in with the cloud like we are, um, everything's easier, right? And so accidents are easier also. Um, you know, <laughs> deleting your data is easier. Um, so, you know, what we really want and what and a lot of security too want, is potential. Right? Absolutely, yeah. And so what we want is we want to get some of that benefit, you know, back uh, that we had from that inefficiency that we had beforehand. We love all the benefits of the cloud, but we want to have our data protected also. So this is a, a, a great role for 
for a company like Druva to come in and offer a product like Phoenix and say, you know, we're going to handle, we're going to handle your backups for you essentially, right? So you're going to put it in a safe place, we're going to secure it for you, um, and we're going to uh, make sure it's secure for you. And uh, doing it uh, software as a service like, like Druva does with Phoenix, I think is the absolute right way to go. This is exactly what you need. Well, congratulations, Jake Burns, Vice President of Cloud Services. Thank you. At Live Nation Entertainment, just been saying CEO Thank Druva, great much. to have you on. Congratulations on your success. Thank you. Uh, inside the tornado called Cloud Computing, a lot more stuff coming. More CUBE coverage coming up after this short break. Be right back.